We got a red dot, folks. Welcome back to Akron's hottest and fastest growing show, Three Toe to Go. I'm your host, Hank Forrester, coming to you live from the original Stakeout Studios, right here overlooking the rolling plains of Hardesty Park. And I'm being joined by Brittany, who's the artistic director of the Night Light Cinema in downtown Akron. Brittany, how are you? Great. How are you? Hey. I'm just living the dream, as we like to say right now in this COVID nightmare. Oh my gosh! So I, I'm reaching out to you, uh, and, and and I had mentioned to you off cam. I was walking through Acme last week, and and one of the one of the guys that's part of your guys' team, he he said, "Hey, hey, Hank, what's up? It, we follow three thirty to go. We watch you guys. Would you be willing to talk about the cinema?" And I'm like, "Absolutely." Um, so that's kind of how this happened. So the first question I always ask everybody is, Brittany, what is your 330 story? Did you grow up here? Did you end up here? How did that happen? Tell us about Brittany. It's a wild kind of adventure. So hang on. Um, so I'm not from Akron. Um, and I'm from a little, well, it's not really a little, I guess it's little to me because I just is Menor, Ohio, but it's actually like a pretty big suburb. Um, you know, uh, 45 minutes away from here. And then, you know, I went to college in Cleveland at the Cleveland Institute of Art. And, um, wow, most of my film um, experience comes <laughs> from, I know she literally flew just, on my uh, You have a bird on your head. I, I know. Just I told you when I told you she wanted to be a part of the conversation, I was not kidding. Okay. Um, so when I, uh, I graduated in 2014, um, you know, with a fine arts degree, and I worked also at the Cleveland Cinematheque. If you know the three three O people, I don't know about a really great art house theater up north. That's uh, the Cinematheque, and um, where I drive derive a lot of my inspiration from. Um, and then when I got um, exposed to Akron, actually more or less through uh, the past executive director of the Nightlight Cinema, Curtis Hare, and um, I also taught at uh, Cuyahoga Community College with one of the main founders of the Nightlight. Um, so we developed a friendship and, you know, over the years as I was kind of like, you know, figuring out what I wanted to do and whatnot, like, you know, uh, my friend at Tri C was like, hey, you know, you should apply for the executive director of the Nightlight. But at the time, I, you know, had uh, worked as a show leader for a little bit, um, you know, because Curtis Hare, uh, like, was like, I need more people that are interested in film, and I would love for you to work here. And I'm like, wow, to work for two amazing art houses? Like, hell yeah, count me in. I didn't even think about, like, the hour drive. And I was just getting kind of introduced to Akron through um, some people in my life at the time. Um, and, you know, because, like, we didn't, we didn't, move around much like in Cleveland I thought like you know I established myself pretty well there but um it was time to branch out um and you know Akron's a complete different um city and just you know the people I love down here a little bit more they're a lot more wholesome I think not just to say up to Cleveland but I that's just how these years have been kind of proving in my friendships and relationships here um and like, you know, I became artistic director in summer of 20, I guess, 18 now. So it'll be, well, the, well, so I, I sometimes get confused because when I started as a show leader, it was a few years back. So I've been part of the nightlight technically for four years and we've uh, been, uh, you know, op in operation uh, for now six years when it comes to the first week of July. So we're a baby uh, organization, you know, we've uh, been uh, starting out in, like, in Akron, it's, we're the only art house cinema in the area that shows independent films that you can't see really anywhere else in this area or wouldn't be provided to um, Akron audiences. So um, my story ends up here, you know, because, like, it's, what an opportunity to uh, not only lead like the creative direction of this uh, theater, but to make an impact on everyday Akron's lives, you know? So I'm going to drop a couple mentor names on you. So first of all, it's the mentor Cardinals, right? Right. Yeah. All right. So my aunt and uncle live in mentor. They've lived there for many, many years. And bo both my cousins went to mentor high school. So J Jason wow. and Joey Rosa, they're, they're probably older than you, but they are like legendary soccer goalkeepers for the oh, mentor wow. high school program like both cool. of their teams like competed 
And and I don't think they won state championships, but both of them made it like almost their kind of deal. Yeah. So so yeah, I, I I have some connections to Mentor for sure. Yeah. Um, I know we you know we go when we go up we get off at I think it's what three route three hundred six and head That's north. Where I'm off at the end of uh, Reynolds Road there in a cul de sac and right. You know, so um, you still live there and you just commute to Akron? Well, that's my, that's my parents' house. Now I live in Akron. Well, myself. God bless. Good, good, good for so you. I've been established <laughs> here now, you know, um, with my partner, like now we're going to, we're going on three years. Um, and you know, we just live here with our two cats and a bird. And nice. Like nice. So, so before we go on and talk about the cinema, um, let's, let's talk about the bird because she oh, has <laughs> become, she's now a part of the show. So Who's our, who's the bird here? So her name's Bibi. It's actually uh, after a Swedish actress um, from Ingmar Bergman's films, uh, Bibi Anderson. And, okay. you know, she's kind of like this gray, foggy, like little, like little bird. And I, uh, like my mom for my 26th birthday, she was like, you know, I, I grew up with birds. My whole life had one of my own I guess you know she's like, well I think I want to get give you this and I'm like okay and so when I went out to visit her we went to like this like uh, it's like a family-owned pet shop you know and uh dude she was the only one that was left you know and it was kind of just like that interconnect that connection that you just like have very uh rare moments you know it's made to be yeah and she's made to a be little baby and you know I've been raising her now for two years her second birthday was in March um she's very uh particular about uh like obviously like uh, attention but you know she loves to be with me and she loves daniel my partner so much um she loves to let everybody in the world know when we're home you know that's funny yeah, <laughs> she just she's just like thought. listen listen yeah. you guys are doing the show i'm gonna be a part of it so i'm like right. okay <laughs> yeah um, but it's been right. amazing to kind of like cultivate like i love my pets very much but like um Bibi is very intelligent. Like she's really, really uh, like, like she loves to sit in the bottom of the shower, you know, and like, you know, raise her head like it's like heaven, you know, coming pouring down on her. And I mean, she loves like she's very temperamental with her food, and you just watch like how she uh, and interacts with the world. But I love cockatiels; I think they're really intelligent birds. That's fantastic. Yeah. All right. So, so the nightlight is is for for folks that aren't familiar, the nightlight is in that little plaza area where blue and crave and uncorked wine bar are isn't musica right there too yeah right. um, Musica is like right behind us there um, okay and yeah we do a lot of pro like music is always promoting our um films and stuff and i love jen kid who okay comes, like, so, so yeah and I, we know jen and it's at market street high street area so for for those of you that aren't familiar directly across the street from akron and brewing um so uh, one of the interesting things, so we, we also, um, Three Throw to Go also has an affiliate page. It's called Rubber City Reviews, and that's our movie review team, okay? That, that, in, that incorporates, we got Jesse Unk, uh, we got Evan Pohl, who runs uh, Preview Review, which is a movie review page. We, we've got um, uh, Nick Mancuso, who runs Does It Suck? That's our, that's our main 330 review page. And then the film freak, which is Chris Kessinger. Okay. So we've got, I love Chris. yeah, so we, and he's the oh, film freak, right? So we, we've got a, we've got a group that we work with, with rubber city reviews. And I know that they all have talked to me about the nightlight before because they can go and they can see those movies that you can't see in other parts of, of the 330. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, so to that end, what have you guys been doing? All right. So everything happened, you know, middle of March, it was like March 17th, 15th, 17th, whatever, everything went in lockdown. Okay. 16th, right before my dad's birthday, I remember. And you guys immediately went into, you had to evolve and adapt. So what was the thing? What, what did you do to, to make that change in terms of streaming and with your online audience and how does that work? How did that all work? So it's wild because like, you know, as things were progressing really quickly, you know, to the board of directors, I was like this, I, we were all feeling like, oh, this is, this is happening. <laughs> um, it was uh, actually before Governor DeWine put like the, uh, you know, closing um, mandatory stuff day right before, you know, we decided to, we got all got on a phone call and you know, we we're like, let's, let's send the show leaders home. Like now we're stopping our uh, shows midday. Um, and 
little did I know, like, I'm like thinking, oh, is this going to be like for a few weeks? And it's not because we've never experienced a pandemic in our lifetimes. But, you know, there's still people around who experienced, you know, the 1920s one, or I think 1912. I, I forget the exact year, but where it was an extreme pandemic and millions of people died, you know. Um, but this whole scenario, we, we didn't anticipate um, just how, how, how long we would be closed. So, I mean, that, that first week with everything, like, we're just like, okay, I, let's just plan this after, see how it happens in like, you know, two weeks, you know, but then, um, you know, we were part of, we're part of the art house convergence. And what that is, is basically a nationwide group of art house cinemas that are dedicated to advancing like the cinema and community like we are, but that's our mission um, separately. But uh, they are dedicated to, you know, showing these films to their community and making their uh, places like, you know, a better place to live, like they're living. Um, and uh, so we, I'm trying to like roll back. Um, as they were getting out like all this information cause they were it's like, was a slow closure for everybody. Um, there was an initiative started by Kino Lorber and they've done restorations for films and, you know, also have like a really great um, standing with us as a distributor of independent films. They launched, um, it's called Kino Now and it's like a virtual cinema platform that basically this partner would be, we would um, treat it as like, you know, the films that we program normally but we would split it like with a 50% cost and it would just strictly be streaming. So, you know, we were hesitant at first because, you know, obviously we're a theater and we thrive specifically on the um, community experience um, when it comes to watching films. And so at that time, like, we're like, is this a platform for streaming services that are like, what are we doing? Like, it was just something that, you know, we didn't, we didn't know, we were hesitant about. Um, but then as things progressed, we had to figure out some method of keeping content alive and also, um, you know, our staff, um, paid. <laughs> so we have to, we were, you know, going through all of our, you know, financial stuff and, you know, it was a, just a really scary time for that. But with the virtual cinema platform, you're able to, you know, with, with these independent releases, um, so it's like a kind of a day and uh, date kind of thing where um, usually video on demand, uh, like usually releases like a date, like a normal film would. And then um, we would get it for about like a few weeks and, you know, our, our patrons um, would go through our virtual cinema um, platform. Like uh, it was a new addition to our website. Um, and they would go and they'd select it for, uh, how many, how much it was. And each film differed because of how long it was out or, um, just how long they could see it. So you'd spend like $12, but you would get to watch the film for like three or three to five days. Um, which at the nightlight, you play that one time and you see, you know, in person, but you know, you're missing the, uh, I guess the community experience with that and the, the feeling of being in a place where you could focus and devote, you know, that hour and a half, two hours to the film that you're seeing. Um, the virtual screening platform has like carried us, you know, a little bit substantially, but mostly um, the response from our community as like, we don't want to see the night like go away um, was unbelievable. Um, not in the entire history of my experience at the highlight have I seen people like so quickly like come together, you know, um, for the things that they love and yeah. they don't want to um, see disappear. And, you know, the nightlight is a 46 seat theater. We are small, um, one screen as well, you know, um, and like we, we were anticipating with rent, well, we did anticipate or estimate completely with rent, utilities, and all that stuff that we were losing, you know, 12000 a month. Yeah. That's horrifying. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and, um, well and, and again, entertainment industry in general. I mean, from a DJ standpoint, I, 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 
I've lost three and a half months of weddings at this point. Right. <laughs> so did, did you guys at least get an opportunity to do some of the help as far as the PPP and the, the yeah, so that's that's what now like we we got that like kind of like on the second run. Okay. Through, the initial run we did not because <laughs> um, I guess like it ran out of money, right? right. Um, and then uh, we were able to make like our through just March and April alone, our individual patrons uh, supported us through that, okay. uh, and throughout May too. But when we got the pay role protection program, it kind of gave us a little bit of breathing room and relief, you know, especially for our staff that we've kept, we've paid throughout these months. We did not furlough anybody. Um, and it, it's just wild that, um, you know, we've had that kind of response and, you know, especially when people are trying to, you know, save their pockets and stuff and just, but they, they know the need. All right. Well, let's, let's take a brief virtual tour. I'm going to share the screen with you and you just kind of talk me through what we're looking at. Okay. Um, so it's all pictures. Oh, sure. Yeah. All right. So here we go. I'll bring this up. All right. Can you see that? Sure. All right. So there's, there's the outside. Yeah. All right. Um, it kind of, I, 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 we are a partner with the Rialto theater in Kenmore. So the, the front, oh, cool. Tell yeah. Them how. <laughs> yeah. So the front, the front kind of reminds me a little bit of the Rialto. We were just there on Friday. So let's take a look here. We'll go to the next screen. Okay. There's the front. Yep. 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 And so what do we got here? So that's our bar. Um, if anybody doesn't know that we have a small concessions bar, um, most, mostly that like, uh, you know, when we operate full year, um, our concessions revenue is like 50 to 60% of, you know, the overall contributions. Um, so now that that's not in existence, that's where we're really um, struggling here. Um, okay. That's when it comes to reopening, we don't know um, what that's going to look like because, you know, with people with masks and taking them down and off their face and stuff like that, it's just, we, it's, it's not looking very safe. So we don't know yet, but we're going to get that out like later to just kind of figure out what's the safest protocol we can be taking. And, for, and forgive my ignorance. Um, but when you say bar, you guys, you guys serve alcohol there? We serve alcohol. We have a fully uh, operational liquor license. We've done craft cocktails, which is a big part of, um, you know, my experience there at the nightlight is uh, making that available for people to have artisan uh, drinks and, um, you know, more of an experience in that manner. Um, we have like small, uh, like we have our, our popcorn, obviously, but we have like, you know, we support the peanut, peanut shop. Um, and then, you know, we have like a lot of uh, candy as well for people. That's cool. All right. Let's take a, let's take yeah. a look here. We got a ticket booth. Mm -hmm. All right. We got, what's this? So that is our lounge uh, 237. So that was um, actually when I started at the Nightlight, like as artistic director, that was really brand new. Um, so it's a fully functional like backspace that people can rent out and have their own private screening experience. Um, we host a lot of like Q and A's and stuff in it. Um, and, that's and totally, like, that's totally cool. <laughs> that yeah. is totally like, cool. Green <laughs> and like a fully functional like projector, all that stuff. Um, it's a really like nice place to have like uh, intimate conversations. Nice. That's Very what we're cool. <laughs> you here's, know, the right? here's the night view of the front. Yep. Okay. And that's the hallway. Um, so you'll see like all of our, uh, these, these poster frames here. Um, they were designed by Dominic Falcone of, uh, I'm trying to think of a uh, craft or no, I'm trying to think of his, uh, I will share that. Um, okay. Okay. His name right now. Like I think of his name, but I can't think of his, uh, Crunchworks, Crunchworks, excuse me. Okay. Um, and it's been a while since I've talked to him. Um, and he's the one that designed these um, beautiful art, art deco kind of night light, okay. which is our um, logo based. Right. They're lit in the hallway for people to see. All right, what do we got here? So that's the screen I was telling you about in Lounge 237. It's really, really nice. It's a dreamy little space. That's the theater. Um, okay. with our old, those are our old seats. <laughs> but we've recently gotten uh, from a Kickstarter campaign, I think when we finished in either 2017, um, we got them all replaced. All right. So this is the perfect picture to talk about the next step. 
Sure. So here we are. You got, you just got the order in your hand. Now it says you can now open on X, right? right. So now what are you going to do? What, what, how, what do we do next? How so, does this, how does uh, this work? A great question. Um, so a few weeks ago I did the same, I asked myself the same thing and I walked in and you know, my partner and I, um, Daniel, he, he's really good at like drawing out like things that, you know, mapping things out. Like he does, he designs things on his own for his own artistic purposes. But um, he and I were measure, measuring out like where the seats were looking at because it's not just um, individuals we're looking at. Like we know people are going to come with, uh, you know, one or two others. <laughs> so what I'm thinking of is sectioning like, you know, uh, in groups of two, you know, throughout the theater. Um, okay. But we're looking at like, six feet apart still you know but the space itself we're looking at the ventilation of the space like how is that going to be um you know affecting people because you know with covid it's mostly rep rep it, it is a respiratory virus um so it's carried in air in close quarters so um our space doesn't help that um so we have to try and determine like um you know if that uh air is being float out like how how are we going to space people out but i'm looking at like two people like every row but like um they're kind of like a zigzag formation like okay. to the far right but we'll see that's just the idea okay but we don't know yet we're looking at a capacity um you know mid like of I don't know. Um, 25, 20, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. 20% of what we're looking at that. You know. and, and, and again, the more we're learning more about this virus every day and the, and, and the rules and the goalposts keep changing in terms of where they're at. So, you know, hopefully as we learn more and we get contact tracing into place and all these other things and testing, it will alleviate that requirement for you to have to be so strict in terms of where you put people. Right. right. So, you know, um, all right, so let's take a look. We got another slide here. This is the uh, different hallway. No, it's the same hallway. It's just the other end. Um, okay. So, like, we have obviously these pews and stuff. We have to. Everything has to be completely wiped down. I have to reconsider like what the furniture, like you know, uh, setup would be. Um, you know, that's something that uh, you know the board of trustees. All of this information is just ideas. Nothing concrete. Um, you know, cause we haven't revealed like a lot of the uh, reopening steps to the public yet because like we don't have anything concrete. Yeah. Um, that's something we really need to take time that even though people say, or like DeWine's like, yeah, you can reopen. Um, <laughs> right. I know. They're, I like, they're like YOLO, but then they give you like 35,000 rules. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, exactly. We have to make sure that those rules are, but also like that our staff feel safe to come to work. Sure. 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 Um, <laughs> So that is our like really top priority. And also, oh, I, I love that picture. Um, and, but also our patrons are a top priority of their safety. If they're not coming out, I, then why? There's a good shot of the bar right there. That's yep. great. That's pretty cool. I love our little bar. That's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. All right. There's the reverse, the front. Yep. Okay. What's all, what's, what's all this good stuff? So all of that was, um, so we've, we've changed a lot because obviously we don't have candy necklaces anymore. <laughs> um, but we, uh, <laughs> these are designed by, um, well, Corey Sheldon and his, uh, partner, Melissa Olson. Um, she's really great at chalk art. And I think she drew some of these, um, as far as I know. Um, but they're usually, that's our, like our menu, like what we have. Um, and no, so. Why, why, why? Why would candy necklaces ever be discontinued? I, mean, I know. I, didn't, <laughs> I don't know where they got them. <laughs> those are right up there with, with nerd ropes. Come on. Come yeah, on. I, I actually think that would be sweet to bring back. <laughs> All right. Uh, so then we got um, popcorn. A couple of bartenders here. Those are a past staff. Okay. All right. And then yeah, the, the bar again. All right, I'm gonna. Hit, love the bar. <laughs> I'm gonna hit the stop share. All right, so yeah, so I mean, God bless you guys. Thanks. Good luck trying to figure yeah. all this out. <laughs> well, we're in positive spirits, you know. But with everything going on, um, we've shifted our focus towards, uh, you know, this racial injustice and uh, all that stuff right now. That's so crucial and part of the conversation as to what we're doing in our day-to-day -day lives and even when it comes to the nightlight you know and we 
are so we pride ourselves on you know the inclusivity of you know what we do in our programming in cinema but we could always be better and open up more conversations so this weekend uh or last or yesterday we started um this uh it's a, our partnership with the Knight Foundation, who's one of our founding, uh, like, contributors as to why the Nightlight exists. Um, they have partnered with the O Cinema, which is another um, art house cinema like the Nightlight, but they're in Miami, Florida. And uh, they partnered with Magnolia Pictures um, to show three important documentaries that everybody who needs to, like, you know, continue broadening the conversations that we need to be having in our day-to-day -day lives about racial inequality. Um, and they've uh, taken over the screening fees for these, for everybody, and it's free. So if anybody wants to come to nightlightcinema.com and, you know, hear more about that, um, that's really awesome. That's a way that we can still contribute, even though when we don't have a physical space, we're still creating a virtual space for people to talk about this, the level of importance. Yeah, that's good. Um, and, and, and you broke up just a little bit as a, as a network, <clears throat> you know, as three through to go, we've been out, we've been out with boots on the ground, right? We've been across Akron and in the three through area for the last two weeks, covering all the protests and covering all of this, this that's going on. And, it, and, you know, I, every single day, I got four kids. I got four kids. And we've been open about that. The whole network knows about my kids. You know, one's a senior graduating from Firestone. She graduated a couple of weeks ago. Oh, and yeah. She might know uh, our friend Maya Miller. She's I'm sure I'm sure she does. Yeah, my, my, well, and, and again, I, I'm going to hook my daughter up with you guys, hopefully sure. soon down the road. She's in technical theater. So oh, she, she's going to be going to University of Akron. She wants to uh, pursue theater. Um, and she's been a part of the Firestone theater program. And, but I, I, the, the, the four of them, you know, even the baby, the baby's four years old. She's about to turn five. Every day we wake up, I say, listen, you guys are living through history right now. This 2020 year, can you imagine trying to duplicate this ever again? <laughs> I know, but. And we're only at halftime. We're only at halftime. <laughs> right. And we've seen that um, this history is repeating, but also, you know, enough's enough, right? Like, yeah. and, these and, conversations are being. And it's, but it's all, but it's all of it. It's, it's, it's the, 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 it's the racial equality component, but then it's coming off of the heels of this global pandemic. And just when yeah. you, and then, I mean, you know, the bingo squares for 2020 and the Jumanji game board, right? And it's like, <laughs> I've tried to explain to them as a parent, right. this doesn't happen every year. <laughs> so, so yeah, but listen, I, I, I really, really appreciate you coming on with me and, and we're going to do everything that we can. You know, our whole platform exists to support local businesses and to support local ventures and to help people get their message out and to, to just find a way to be a part of that Akron and Canton community. Right. Sure. So, so thank you so much for coming on. Yeah, no, it was my pleasure. And I really appreciate all your questions and, you know, um, if every, anybody out there like needs more information about, you know, just a place where these conversations can happen. Like just head to nightlightcinema.com, you know, follow us on social media, you know, we'll, we'll do our best to be a part of that with you, you know, that you have a safe place. So that's my job at the nightlight is to ensure that for people. And I really um, love that, you know, so it's, it's cool. Thank you for the conversation. Brittany, thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah. I'll, I'll sign off now. I'll do my old sign off thing and then I'll hit the stop record button. All right. Sounds folks, good. folks, thank you so much for tuning in to three through to go. We appreciate you being a part of our audience. The last the last few months have just been incredible. We've grown so much and we want to continue to be a part of that Akron Canton community and do whatever we can to be a resource to help people out. All right. Uh, as far as our upcoming programming coming up in the next week, we have nothing scheduled on the docket, but you know how that goes. You guys just throw up the bat signal and we'll be anywhere and everywhere in the three throw to cover whatever's going on. Hey, until then, I don't know where I'm going, but there ain't no sense of being lame. Everybody out there, 
Say goodnight, Shirley.